evening and welcome to Sydney Memorial Stadium where tonight WSM brings you a regional semifinal football game. Our matchup tonight, the Minster Wildcats and the Fort Laramie Redskins. My name is Mark Shines. My pleasure to be played by play alongside Corey Britton to do our color commentary. Corey, these two teams played uh, three months ago back in uh, August. Fort Laramie won. Any bearing on this particular game tonight? Weather's a lot different tonight than it was <laughs> back then. It was high 90s back then, great weather. I don't think so. It was a really well played game by both teams. Uh, it was close down to the final drive. Fort Laramie scored on a long touchdown with about three minutes left to put the game away. So I expect a back and forth contest tonight um, down to the wire again. Each of these teams have dynamic quarterbacks this evening and on a, a tonight that probably will be uh, evident again. Oh, 100%. Brogan Steffi, 2,000 yard passer, 1,000 uh, yard rusher. He's going to lead the Wildcats. and. Uh, Caleb Maurer, uh, excellent passer for the Redskins, over 3,000 yards, over 30 touchdowns for Fort Laramie. Uh, it's going to be a track meet tonight. I hope everybody's got it. Everybody's ready to go. Well, it is 33 degrees. There's a wind right now, which will currently favor Fort Laramie, and there's been a snow in the air, so it is certainly November football weather tonight. Fort Laramie will kick off, and that means that the opening kickoff will go to Minster, and we talked about that quarterback. That will be number 12, Brogan Steffi. Just a sophomore at 6'1", 165. He has completed 154 passes. And Corey, he's thrown 265 balls this year, and only two of them have picked off. Highly impressive for a sophomore. Very, very efficient. 2,359 yards, 20 touchdowns, averaging 214 yards through the air game. So the Wildcats will lean on his running and arm tonight in this one. And as you said a moment ago, he has 831 yards on the ground this year and 17 scores as well. And this is nothing else to do. He kicks the ATs and field goals. Yes, he so does. Very busy young man. Here's our opening kickoff here from Sydney Memorial Stadium, the semifinal night. Ball's popped up into the air and he eventually bounces around into the hands. Of the House. I'm sorry? House. Chase House. Wraps that one down, number 15, and they will begin from right about their own 27-yard line. In the backfield, along with Steffi. You see who they run back out there. Connor Schmeezing has been out there quite a bit. So has Devin Webker. We'll see which one or if both of them end up in the backfield. And he has a great receiver in, in Niemeyer, too, James Niemeyer. Backfield is Steffi. Trips right, two receivers to his left. And he runs up the middle. Good yards on first down and more. Steffi up close to midfield before he gets pushed out of bounds. Design run to start the game. A little quarterback draw allowed the defense up the field. Steffi takes it all the way to the 49-yard line. Big game for the Wildcats in the first play of the game. The two-yard pickup. Our first down tonight is sponsored by Busher Electric, a full-service electrical contractor servicing the area communities for over 40 years. You can depend on Busher Electric for all of your electric needs. To the 49-yard line, 22-yard pickup on first down. Steffi will send two receivers to the left. Slot back, single receiver right. And we'll hand off up the middle this time. The run will be by number, what's the number? Number, number 10, 10, Connor Schmeezing. Number 10, Connor Schmeezing with that run. Gain of six there. Another big gain for the Wildcats. Puts them ahead of the chains here on second down. Schmies has rushed for 394 yards and five scores this year. Stay in the backfield. Some sharp pickup on first down, second four. Steffi will keep it himself. First up the middle, first down and more. And he will get down to about the 33 yard line. Another big hole right up the middle for Steffi. Menster's found something that they like early in this game. To the 32-yard line, they go pick up a 13 on a Bush of Electric first down. Good push right now for the Minster offensive line. And it has been. We'll try to get those names out to you as the game progresses. This is Connor Schmeezing set up behind Steffi. And he will take this handoff. 
Not much room to run on that play. Good job by the Redskins there holding down the front. Looked like number 32, Darren Eilerman there on the tackle for the Redskins. If you look at numbers uh, on the, the year for these uh, two teams, it's for Minster Wildcats, they rush it at 125.7 yards. They throw it to 218, 343.8. So a pretty balanced offensive unit that they have done this year. Here's Steffi alone in the backfield this time, Brogan. Looks like Fort Lorman's going to bring the blitz here. The drop out of it. Here's Steffi inside the 30 to about the 29. Calvin Hoying there on the tackle from his middle linebacker position. Number 53 there for Fort Lorman on the play. Makes a third down, looking about third and seven. See how hard it is here to throw into this win. Minster going right into it early. Well, we talked about the, the field goal efforts this year. Steffi has made three of them this year. One between the 30 and 39 yard line, but that's a lot different in this cold and in this particular win. Probably four down territory. It's third and seven. The Schmeezing set up behind Steffi. And the first pass to him. Blitz comes off the edge, and he steps up and runs. And he has a first down and more. Steffi headed to the end zone. And he's going to get there from 29 yards out. Big play. Good read by Steffi. He saw the gap up the middle and outraced the Fort Lorme defense into the left corner of the end zone. Very effective first drive for Minster, and they take an early 6 to nothing lead. That they do. Here comes that PAT attempt by Brogan Steffi. That will be his 18th rushing touchdown of the year. It comes from 29 yards out. It took him just under three minutes, 2.58 to make that drive. And they did so in six plays. Here's Steffi's PAT. It sails through. Opening score goes to Minster. They will take a 7 0 lead. You're watching high school playoff football on WOSN. Drive of the game. Tonight's scoreboard is sponsored by Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alts. But Structure Outdoor Ohio bring your indoors out. And that opening drive, 29 yard touchdown run. That will be the 18th touchdown rush of the season for Broken Steffi. 258 went off the clock. Six plays to go to those 73 yards. Let's see what Fort Army will do with their initial possession here in our opening quarter. Steffi kicks off the line driver. Christian McGee. He's, He's got, got some run. Look out. McGee, McGee over midfield. He's going to get a good big return for yes. the Redskins. And a penalty flag at the end of the play there from the trailing official. Kind of rode him out of bounds and didn't let go. That just continued. Big rush for big run. Run back by McGee. Right away, Redskins in great territory. The ball went down to the 34 yard. I've got a sideline warning against. Fort Army too. That, that kind of bothers me a little bit. We're just showing excitement and okay. Yeah, I thought I think the Fort Army sideline wanted a late hit out of bounds there, but instead they're going to get the sideline warning instead. But a great return there by McGee switches the momentum a little bit here, gives the Redskins great field position to start this drive. To the 36-yard line, thanks to McGee's rush. Their quarterback is Caleb Bauer, 217 completions, 343 attempts. 3,043 yards and 32 scores through the air. He goes trips left, two receivers right. And he's going to run up the middle. And cut back. He's got some room to run. Here goes Caleb Mauer. And one guy to beat. He gets knocked out of bounds. At the, down inside the uh, five-yard line by James Niemeyer. It's not a play that Fort Lorne will go too much, but they go to it on the very first play that pays big dividends as Caleb Maurer takes it to the two-yard line for the Redskins. 34-yard pickup for him, and another Bush reluctant first down. That's the big use of shootout, Corey. I, you know, I watched these two teams play earlier. Both teams are very skilled offensively, a lot of really good players. I, I could see this being in the 30s and 40s tonight. What is that, 39-27 Fort Army in the opening game? What's 
Looks like we have a little maybe equipment malfunction here as Logan Eilerman trots off the field. Looks like his jersey just wasn't over the top of his shoulder pads right. there. That brings in. Looks like number 16, Cole Barhorst. <laughs> Holland sets up behind Maurer. Maurer will keep it. <laughs> yeah, he does. Brought down in the backfield by Chase Klaus. We'll take it back to about the eight yard line, the six yard loss. Second and goal for the eight. Pretty good fake, I thought he was the ball to He did not. He kept it himself. 32 Islanders in the backfield. With him. Yeah, he's in the backfield with him starting tonight. 25, 225 yards on the ground and four scores for Darren this year. High snap. Our looks. Looks and we'll throw it to the end zone and we'll fall incomplete. Pretty good defense. Yeah, looking for his main target there, Logan Eilerman. He's caught 92 passes this year for four, just over 1,400 yards and 18 touchdowns. That's his main target through the air. He's going back to him there in the end, center of the end zone. Just missed him. 6'4, 210 pound wide out. It's a young man to go get the ball. And I think that young man you know pretty well, don't you? I do. He's, he'll help us out of the hardwood a lot this winter. High snap again. There's the handoff. Eilerman right up the middle of the five. Only wears number 32 on his jersey. Now a bit decision time for Spencer Wells to make just outside the five yard line. It's fourth down. Aiden Bolin has done his PAT work for him this year. He has one field goal this year. They're going to go uh, try to even this one up. Now it takes the snap. And we'll look. And look and throw it towards look the end. Look at Eilerman. Man. Got him. He just kind of held off his guy. Went and got him. Logan Eilerman with his 19th touchdown catch of the year. Really good patience there by Maurer to stay in that pocket. He took a hit as he delivered it there too and was able to put it in a place where only his receiver was going to catch it. And Logan did what he's done all year long for the 93rd time this year, makes the big catch. He catches 93 balls in the season. That's, just, that's an unheard of number. Those two could probably do it with their eyes closed at this point in the season. Here's a Bolin. Try to knock this one up. Kick is up. Plenty of distance and sails through. We got a shootout. We're tied at seven. You're watching high school playoff football, WOSN. We're back at City Memorial Stadium. Each team has had the football once, each team has scored. This one was a five play, six or four yard drive. Took a minute 47 off the clock for Fort Army. Ended up with a touchdown catch by Eilerman. His 19th of the year. That is Caleb Mauer's 33rd touchdown pass of the 2022 campaign. He's popped up to the middle of the field. Schmeezy's going to run in and grab it. Schmeezy's got room to run. And he is going to be up near midfield before he gets knocked down. Lots of big offensive fireworks already in this one. Put the football down right at the 48 yard line. It's that last touchdown was served by the big kickoff return by Fort Army. All the way down to the 36. See what happens for the Minster Wildcats with possession number two. See what kind of adjustments Fort Army can make here as Steffi really saw something in the middle of that defense, that first possession. Let's see if Fort Army can't make some adjustments and try to slow down that rushing attack. Their average is 31 points per game offensively. Here's Steffi. Fakes it. Two Runs right. And we'll get one out of bounds inside of Redskin territory. Nice little play fake there on the read option. Slip it around the right end there. Just like that, Minster's in Fort Army territory already. Pickup of seven. 
Second and three. Redskins. Excuse me, Wildcats. Steffi, a little conversation over on the sideline with Coach Whiting. And Schmeezing in the backfield with him. And trips to his left. Steffi will run again. Find running room again. Yet another first down. That will be another Busher Electric first down. Spencer did a really nice job on that right side of the line. I don't think anybody touched him for about five or six yards down the field. Getting a really, really big push up front right now on the Fort Army front. Nick Winter, Fletcher Luffman, Keaton Sharp, Dave Barhars, Ian Holman. Those people up front moving bodies around for the Mr. Wildcats. To the 34 yard line they go. It was an 11 yard pickup. Be schmeezing and he makes the first guy miss, but not the second. Cotner there in the backfield, first to Fort Laramie. And then the great pursue by the rest of the Redskin defense. Isaac Ratterman there on the play to clean up the mess and puts the Red, puts the Wildcats behind the chains here for the very first time tonight. That lost two that time. That'll make it. We're looking at second and 12 right here. We pass through the halfway point of the opening quarter. I think that's going to be big all night tonight, Mark. Which defense can force the offenses to play behind the chains? Who can make the, the, the offense back up a little bit and get out of their comfort zone? He's getting a little coaching from his quarterback. Steffi the throw. And he's going to throw back. Schmeezing on that side of the field. Got he's got some jets. And he gets inside the 30. At the 28-yard line, they need to get to the 24 for a first down. Look at third down. Damian Bruns and Roger Poing there catch him from behind. Nice job of rolling to the left there by Steffi and throwing back to Sneezing on the right. Pretty safe pass in this win, too, yes, rather than trying to throw it downfield into a pretty good breeze. Third and manageable now for the Wildcats. And it is. Sneezing will set up behind Steffi. And Brogan takes the snap, hands off. Schmeezing, no one to run this time. They knock him down in the backfield. Big play there off the edge by number 32, Darren Eilerman. Came off the right edge there to make the big tackle in the backfield. Lost one back to the 29. It'll be fourth and five, obviously. We're in four down territory here. will go left. Schmeezing will set up behind Brogan Steffi. See if Fort Lonely brings that pressure again. Showing man, here they come. Up the middle they come. They run him out of the pocket and bring him out to the backfield. Gabe Hart from behind makes the big tackle. The sophomore linebacker makes the big tackle. And Minster will turn it over on downs. They do. They brought a bunch. More than they could block, and he made the good play in the backfield and brought Brogan Steffi down. They'll turn it over to Fort Lomby, and then we'll take over on their own 42-yard line. So here comes Caleb Maurer. Holland behind him. That would be Will Holland. 940 yards and 12 scores for Will this year. And he will get a run to the left side. And they get him in the backfield. They cut him down. Is that Klaus again? Tell you what, Fort Lormie's timing a little bit off right now offensively as the snaps are just high. And when you get that snap high, it's going to throw your timing and rhythm off a little bit. And I think it threw that running play off as Mr. was able to pursue the football in a hurry. Lost four back to their own 38-yard line. So we're looking at second and 14. They will have the football for just over three minutes going with the win, and they will turn it back in the other direction. Here's Maurer, quick out, caught. This is Ireland again. Really good tackle there on the play by Minster. Kaus and number 81 
Charlie sneezing there on the play for the Wildcats. Third and nine here for Fort Norman. And it is. Not a short pickup that time, but a good completion. Howard in the backfield along with Mauer. That pass is thrown to Ireland and it caught. No, dropped it. Uh, thought he thought he pulled it in I there as he went rolled over. I think it just came out. So Menster's defense responds with a stop of their own. So, so what looked like a shootout <laughs> turned into <laughs> slowly slowed down. Yeah, here. Slowed down a little bit, didn't, didn't do well. Here's the punter. The punter is Brady Wolf, who averages just over 33 yards per punt. Spencer, Spencer in office punting for the four. He is. All right, thank you. Goes up in the air. That is that is my mistake. That was our quarter. That is quarterback Caleb Mauer. Punting was it Mauer? Punting. It was. Not the typical punter for the Redskins tonight, but he's getting the yeah, getting the job tonight. I simply looked at the stat page and was thinking of uh, you know, who has been there for the majority of the year without checking the number. Not a particularly good punt with 2:37 to go. However, considering he had the wind at his back. Pretty good field position here for the Minster Wildcats in their third possession from their own 38 yard line. Well, the Steffi and crew will be out for their third possession with Connor Schmiesing setting up in the backfield. That last possession defensively for Norm, he started to bring a lot more pressure and worked to their advantage. Let's see if they continue that in this possession. 16 there, Niemeyer in motion. Quick out, caught on the far side of the field. Puts the ball in the hands of Brady Wolf. Go to about, uh, see where they put it down, it's up to 43. That'd be a five yard pickup on first down. Nice little roll out, another good safe play to get him ahead of the sticks here on first down. Doesn't seem like the cold winds bother anybody. Nobody's no. No, no, nobody's. Hey, mishandled the ball or anything like that. Seems like everybody's just able to play in this. A lot tougher than I am, Mark. <laughs> I'm glad I'm up here tonight. Uh, we're basketball guys. We prefer to be indoors. Here's Measing setting up behind Steffi. Play clock's running down. And we're going to get a timeout. Our first timeout today will go to the Minister Wildcats trying to beat that play clock. You're watching high school playoff football, WOSN. Rebecca Sydney, our first time out has gone the way of the Minster Wildcats. 149 to go here in our opening quarter. Facing a second and five from their own 43 yard line. Show them blitz. And here they come. Sneezing. Finds a little bit of room and dives for the first down stick. Let's see what the mark is. Really going to be close. That, oh, they're going to wave it ahead. It's going to be another first down, Minster. Yeah, Bush Electric first, first down. Calvin Horn was able to hold on to him, but not after he was able to reach that ball over the first down marker. So Wildcats get a fresh set of downs here out to the 48 yard line. No, 48 yard line. First down. Steffi quick out, and that's not going anywhere as he brought down immediately by Christian McGee. Yeah, no room for Webker to go there. Great pursuit by number 21, the senior cornerback slash safety Christian McGee making a big tackle for the Redskins. Just about five. I'll make it second down as we're under a minute to go here in our opening half. Open quarter, I should say. Behind the sticks. Two receivers to the right, single receiver left. We're schmeezing in the backfield along with Rogan Steffi. Now they're going to flop over James Niemeyer. First team all match player. Here's Steffi going to throw it over the middle. It's caught. And Kaus has got room to run before they're running down. 
Thomas Hoing there able to chase Kaus down. Not till the 25 yard line. Another big play by the Wildcat offense. Caught that in stride and just turned it up the upfield. Got down to the 25 yard line. Really nice play, play design there. They had trips to the wide side of the field. I think Kaus was the outside man and ran a slant in through the misdirection there. And great ball by Steffi, hit him in stride. 32 yard pickup to the 25 of the Redskins. They do not have to run a play, and I think Coach Whiting is very happy, or Coach Wells is very happy about that. His team relax a little bit and get rejuvenated. Seth Whiting is happy about it, too. We're tied at seven with Vince on a roll. You're watching high school playoff football at WOSN. Scoreboard is presented by Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alts. Let your Structure Outdoor Ohio bring your indoors out. First down for the Mr. Wildcats from the 25 yard line of the Fort Arm as we begin quarter number two. Mark Shankoy Britton here at Sydney Memorial Stadium. Let's hand off to Schmeezy. What do we got? All kinds of whistles. Ball start. Start. Yes, we do. We'll take it back five to the 30. First down there. Out of town, we can't, can't get WSN. WSN is now streaming 24-7 online. On Roku and Apple TV, download our Roku channel and Apple TV app to subscribe. A $100 donation allows you to watch anywhere in the world. Visit appwsn.tv to sign up. First penalty of the ball game there comes in the second yeah, quarter. You know, so really, that. That's correct. Really, so you yeah, that. very clean. Yeah. And now we have to have a conference. I think it's because the clock started. Oh, I did. That was the first play of the second quarter. No, I don't believe really the clock should have started. <laughs> Frank Crutch is our head official this evening. He's going to put it back to 12. And we'll begin quarter number two. Eugene Steffi as they have been through much of the game as a tandem in the backfields of the Minster Wildcats. Eight and four coming into this evening. Steffi lost it deep and it'll fall incomplete on the far side of the Just field. on the outstretched hands of trying to catch that number on the far side of the field. Number 16. What, Niemeyer. Niemeyer. James Niemeyer on the far sideline there. Niemeyer came in with 48 catches this year, 630 yards and five scores. Also has eight interceptions in the defensive player this year. This time, Steffi will set up alone in the backfield. Five on the play clock. They do just get it off. It comes blitz off the edge. It gets picked up by the first guy, but they run down the backfield. Really big tackle. Damian Bruns there on the sack for the Redskins. Came in from the defensive end spot on the left side, beat his man, and big takedown in the backfield. And Mincer's got a third and very long here. Back to the 36. Whoever came off the left defensive end, they were able to pick up, but just overwhelmed them in the middle of the field. They need to get down all the way to the 15-yard line, so it's third and 21. They do have the wind at their back here, and with Steffi being a very good kicker, wonder if they're interested to see if they can't get the ball around the 25-yard line and take a chance for three. Schmeezing in the backfield, and we are going to get a Seth Whiting timeout. Timeout brush. You're watching high school playoff football, WOSN. Back here in Sydney, catch the sports report on Friday nights. We've been doing football all fall, and before long, we're headed to basketball. In fact, we've got that real basketball for you next weekend. Sports report is back on Friday nights next weekend next, as well. Third and 21. Out pattern. This is Schmeezing, and they're going to get to him as he hits the 25 yard line. So they got 11. And it will set up fourth down at about 10. Good pass there, threw it to him on time, hit him in stride. He was able to turn up the field for 11. Good execution, give them themselves a, a reasonable chance here on fourth down. Fourth and 10. 
Hogan Stephanie went to the sideline to discuss things with Coach Seth Whiting and has come back with the play calls. We're at 14 on the play clock. They will go trips left and two receivers to the right. Lynchburg used two timeouts already in the half, and the play clock is... Do you have to call timeout no, to beat it? No, I don't think so. I think far official. Let's see flags. Let's see okay. what happens. Well, we're going to talk about it here first. Yeah, there's a flag on the far side of the field. They're going to say Fort Laramie called the timeout before the flag. Fort Laramie called timeout. Okay, they saw something they didn't like uh, from the offensive set, and this time the timeout will go to Spencer Wells. TV44 and WSN are nonprofit organizations supported by viewers like you. Now is a great time to make a donation in any size as a way to say thank you for this sports broadcast. Go to WTLW.com and click Donate here. Donations are accepted 24 hours a day. You can visit WTLW.com. Big fourth down play coming up. Mister on the 25-yard line of the Redskins facing a fourth and ten. Last time Minster faced the fourth down and, and long, Fort Lormie really brought a heavy blitz and was able to get to Steffi before he was able to throw it. So it'll be interesting to see if Fort Lormie brings that same kind of pressure. And what will be the eighth play of this drive? Trips left, two receivers right for Brogan Steffi. Sophomore quarterback. Two all conference players I know you see this year. Here's the blitz coming, they bring him. Going over the middle, and it's almost picked off. Somebody tipped it, didn't they? Yeah, it's partially defended, but really good coverage in the middle of the field by the linebacker, uh, Calvin Hoying, and safety Thomas Hoying. So, did a nice job in the middle of the field, and another great stop by the Fort Laramie defense. That is correct. This is the second time Minster has been in good field position. And the Redskins defense has stood up and kept them from getting into the end zone, which is still tied at seven. The Redskins will take over on their own 25-yard line. Mauer take the snap and receivers go two by two and will keep it himself and is looking for a room to run and maybe gets a yard. Yeah, tried to pull it there, but really good, really good pursuit there by number 74, Fletcher Luthman, and number 26, Will Kanapke for the Wildcat defense. Does get a yard. Eilover checked into the backfield. Where's number 32? The red jerseys. And they're going to go spread. Three receivers to his left, two to his right for Caleb Hour. Six one senior. And he will run right. And will run close to the first down. Let's see what the mark is. He had to get to the 35. He's just short of that. Third and about a yard. Yeah, design, design quarterback sweep all the way along the right side there. He's able to get along the edge. And finally was able to push out of bounds again by James Niebuyer, number 16 on the left edge, on the right edge there. Back him up a yard to the 33. So it will be third and about two. Motion, fake the hand, fake the hand off, and he gets the first down. Does Mauer three consecutive runs? Really, oh, picks up a first down. Really nice spin move there. He just got away from a tackler there and was able to lunge forward for a big Fort Lauderdale first down. It's a five-yard pickup. Our first downs today are sponsored by Pusher Electric, a full service electrical contractor servicing the area communities for over 40 years. You can depend on Busher Electric for all your electrical needs. Holland checks back in here. Will Holland checks back in for the Redskins at tailback. And already those two guys back there, Ireland and Holland. And this will be Holland, and he will get to the 40 before he gets knocked down after a two-yard pickup. Number 24, Brady Wolf there on the stop for the Redskins, or excuse me, for the Wildcats. Another high snap. For it was. Yeah, just yeah. throwing off the timing, just a tad. So. 
first time high school kids have probably played in this kind of weather, a little cold, a little, a little moist. So the two tackles are Calvin Hoying and Lewis Hart. The center is Roger Hoying. The two guards are Jason Siegel and Max Kotner. And here's Mauer to throw. Quick out. Quick, quickly out of his hands, what I meant to say, and that is, I thought it was Ireland. She settles down at about the 49-yard line and picks up a first down in Wildcat territory. Good job by Caleb Maurer there, dropping back and being patient, letting Logan find that spot in the zone and putting it in a spot where only Logan can catch the football and makes the snag. And those five guys we talked about did a good job of protecting him up front as well to give him time to do that. Pitch will go to Max Mauer. Max Mauer gets over the 50-yard line. Will Frimmel on the tackle for the Wildcats. Big hit from the linebacker position. So he got down to the 47. Couple-yard pickup. Comes Darren Idle back into the game as well. 6'3", 190 senior. Now looking to the sideline for the play call. He you know, the rush for 389 yards and nine scores this year. Trips left, two receivers right. And he went right to the middle. And good run for Taylor Mauer. Look out. He's gone. And that would be a dead solid back from 47 yards out. Taylor Mauer puts the Redskins up by a score. Design quarterback draw right up the middle and he broke one tackle at the, from the linebacker spot there and he outran the secondary into the end zone. So Fort Laramie will take a six point lead pending the PAT. A bowler will check in to do that number. We are at 619 to go here in quarter number two. A bowler has made now 50 of 56 PAT attempts on the season, kind of the one he did earlier today. And this one into the wind. Sails through. With a big touchdown run, the Redskins will take 14 on the board, and the Wildcats will seven to watch high school playoff football at WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard is sponsored by Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alts. Structure Outdoor Ohio brings your indoors out. It says 14 for Fort Army and 7 for Minster. That was a 7-play drive. Took 356 off the clock to go 75 yards. 10th rushing touchdown of the season for Caleb Maurer. Good wheels for him. And everybody wants to broke the line of scrimmage. Got by that first linebacker. Here's our kickoff. Popped up over the middle of the field. And bounces around and finally shoots the rest of this ball up. So Fort Larm, but for Minster, who has began their drives on their 27, 48, and 38 yard line, will begin this one on their own 20, it's like 23 yard line, 24 yard line according to the scoreboard. Last possession for the Wildcats. They had a really promising drive until that false start penalty pushed, pushed them back five yards and sort of derailed it a little bit. But they've been moving the football relatively ease up and down the field. Got great field position twice. See if they can't you know, put another good drive together. Man in motion. And this will be a handoff to Schmeezing. Schmeezing's got wheels over the 30. Up to the 31, seven yard pickup on first down for him. Calvin Hoying there on the stop for the Redskins. Leading tackler there for Fort Lormie is Calvin Hoying on the season. With over 70 and a half tackles coming into the night. Set the football down at the 32, so it's second and two. 
pass. That's blocked. Yeah, looks like it dropped. It looks like it might have been deflected there at the line of did, scrimmage. Did yeah, kind of disrupted his timing. Certainly yeah. on the catch, he was reaching for the ball before it got there. So third and two. This is where Brogan Steffi comes very dangerous in his legs. The cutter sneezing behind him. Hands off, sneezing. And they grab him. Let's see where the mark is. It looks like he got to the first down mark. He had to get to the 34 and did so. Right at the 34 yard line and a Busher electric first down. Offensive line did a nice job of just giving him enough room to get that nose of the football across the across the first down mark and keep the drive alive for the Wildcats. This will be just uh, Steffi alone in the backfield this time. As his receivers go trips left and two receivers to his right. To throw. That ball is blocked. Batted down there by the defensive end. Damian Bruns got his big left hand up there to bat that play down for Fort Lorman. He's got their hands on a few balls today. That was the first clean to uh, spike it back at you type block. Good guys are getting up front and getting their hands up a little bit. Steffi listed at 6-1. Damian Bruns is 6-5. So with long arm, he has a big, big defensive end. Same formation as the last time at second and ten. Exactly five minutes to go before the band show. He blitz up the middle. And he breaks containment. He got through it. And they're going to knock him down as he gets to the 36-yard line. Good job, Brogan Steffi. Yeah, Gabe Hart shot the gap there for the Redskins. And Brogan Steffi was able to sidestep him. And find a way out of that mess for a pick up at least three or four for the Wildcats. Big play by the sophomore quarterback. Yeah, they put the football down at the 37. He could well have gone down for six or eight yard loss. Good job by him. Makes a third and about seven. And the Redskins side of the field and there's crowds up losing their defense to get another stop. Right to Steffi, lofts it out and intercepted. Oh, he was out of bounds when he grabbed it, wasn't he? Yeah, he said I think the official had his one foot out of bounds there, but good play there by Dylan Sanders to stay with a tip pass and try to make a play. That's a good call, too. I thought he had stepped out of bounds as he was catching it. That's a good call and a good effort. However, that will also be a stop. Mr. scored on an opening possession and hasn't been able to get the end zone since. Facing fourth and about the seventh, headed to punt formation. Another high snap. Here's the punt. It's going to be a pretty good one. And it's going to hit and check up out of bounds. But Redskins will get one more possession with 3.59 to go before half and a pair of timeouts remaining. Yeah, have 80 yards to do it here as the ball went out of bounds at the 20 yard line. So that really nice punt there by number 24, Brady Wolf for the Wildcats. Flip the field. And going into the wind this time will the uh, Redskins be. Of course, they were able to score both directions, one in the first quarter, one in quarter number two. The free WSN Scores app is the easiest way to follow local high school sports. Go and cover more schools, more sports, and more scores than WSN. Search WSN in the App Store or on the Android Play Store. At halftime, everybody in a press box will grab their phone and go to WSN apps and find out what's going on all around Ohio playoff football this evening. And that was a run by Caleb Maurer. I don't think he got back to the line of scrimmage. No, really good defense by the Minster. Reading their keys, staying home. Brady Wolf there on the tackle in the backfield for the Wildcats. But Maurer lost about a yard. Fort Laramie hasn't been put in this situation very often in my playing behind the sticks, second and long. It's a 
Holland in the backfield, is he? Yes, sir. He is. Here's Mauer to throw. And step up. He's got room to run. And he's going to slide down. And you can see where the slide started on this snowy field. It's going to be too short the first down. Caleb Mauer's doing a really nice job tonight of using his feet when he needs to, finding those openings and putting the running the football and keeping drives alive. It gets into third and one, a big 10-yard carry. It does. As we're at the three-minute mark, and now under, it's third down at about a yard. Pretty important for the Redskins to get a first down, so they'll punt into the wind right here. Play clock down at seven. And off this Holland cuts it back and will dive over the 30 and get that first down. Late, late penalty flag well, we coming do, in. don't we? From the from the way back from the back judge here coming in. Let's see what he got and see if that affects his first down. Redskins are starting to slowly walk yeah, backwards. It'll be a hole. So that'll negate the first down and move the football back all the way to the 21 yard line. Uh, that's a big penalty on Fort Lorimer there. Will Holland did a nice job of putting his foot in the ground and picking up the first down, and that penalty will erase that. They need almost 10. The ball is just outside the 20. There's Mauer to throw. Guns over the middle, there's Ireland over the middle of the field. And still running. And still running. Really good route by Logan Otherman there. He faked the flag route to the to the sideline and put his foot in the ground and made that a post route instead. And Caleb Mauer put the ball right on the money for a huge, huge Fort Army first down. That he did all the way down to the 38-yard line. Becomes a 41-yard pickup. And more importantly, secures a first down with two minutes to go. Redskins have a pair of timeouts remaining. Handoff. Trying to get wide. This is Holland. And did he run out of bounds? He did. About got a yard, I guess, down about the 37-yard line. Nothing there on the outside of the boundary. Good good pursuit by the Minster defense to really string it out. He had run to the short side of the field, and as you said, the defense strung it out and knocked him out of bounds to stop the clock. Second and nine. Power to throw. Three-man rush. And now he throws it deep. And, oh, it popped loose. Yeah, incomplete, and unfortunately for the Redskins, it's going to get uh, pushed back even further here with a holding penalty as there's flags in the backfield. And we're looking to see what Coach Whiting wants to do with the penalty. Push it back farther or make it third. Holding is a spot foul, it so is, it's yeah. about four or five yards back in the backfield to begin with. Plus the 10 yards from there. I mean, Fort Lorme would be looking at a second down and 24 from here, maybe. As one would expect, they did take the penalty back to the 48-yard line. And they need 20 now to get a first down. Caleb had a lot of uh, time in the pocket there to throw the football, and the holding penalty was the reason why. So Here's Mauer. Holland behind him. Now it looks, looks, and throws it over the middle where it's knocked loose. Really, really good yeah. play there by James Niemeyer, the defensive back. Coming over the top of the receiver, Christian McGee there with his inside hand to bat that pass down. Nicely done. Textbook coverage there for, for James Niemeyer. Niemeyer has eight interceptions on the season. And with 91 seconds to go, facing a third and 20. Now we're going to flop somebody over the other side of the field. That was Maxwell Mauer. And we're going to get a timeout. That timeout will go to the Fort Lauderdale Redskins. 91 seconds to go in the half. We watch high school playoff football on WSN.
facing a third and 20. Before Lottery Redskins and Coach Spencer Wells takes her second time out of the half. See how aggressive Coach Wells gets here, third and 20. Hate to make a mistake here when you got a lot of momentum in the lead here late in the half. But you really have a dynamic quarterback in Caleb Maurer and a receiver in Logan Eitherman. A pair of seniors who understand what this game is all about. Just a three-man rush. There's a pass over the middle that's caught. That is Eilerman. Down inside the 35 there. Looks like the 34-yard line. They're going to need about six. Minster, Minster playing that zone, and Logan Eilerman again does a nice job of running his route and picking a hole in the zone, and Caleb finds him again. Really smart receiver, isn't he? He does know how to find a way to get open in the middle of that zone. Here's third and six. Fourth and six. Minute left here in the first half. See if Fort Lorme is going to call another timeout, and it looks like they will. And that they do. We're going to keep it right here with just 51 seconds to go before the half. TV 44 and WSN, there's no admission fee to watch this game, but there is a cost for us to broadcast. Say thanks to viewer supported TV 44 by sending a financial gift. TV44 relies on the donations of viewers to enable airing this game and other locally produced programs. Donate now at WTLW.com and click Donate. Final timeout taken by Fort Laramie. Mr. still has a timeout remaining. That tells you how important this play is to Coach Wells right here. Yeah, it'd be a big, big way to end the half here for Fort Laramie to get a, find a way to get points on the board and vice versa. For Minster being down here, you don't want to fall behind any further and getting a stop and going into the locker room would be a big momentum swing for them as well. It would be a huge play if the Redskins could get in the end zone because not only that, take a 21 7 lead, but they get the football first in half number two. They could really tackle in some damage here against this Wildcat team. But right now, they're looking at fourth and six. Holland in motion. And what do we got this time? A Wildcat timeout. Yeah, they take their final timeout of the half. They must have saw something that they wanted to do. The uh, Minister coaching staff is in the booth right down the hall from us, and they were yelling, get a timeout. Yeah, they saw something. They saw something earlier on prep week during, uh, during the week and saw something that Fort Lorme had an advantage of and wanted to make sure they neutralized that before the snap. Well, you know, the, uh, the MAC has won, uh, what, like 150-some state championships are in that general area. And they tacked on one more today, the New Bremen Lady Cardinal volleyball team with a straight sack victory over Monroeville. And they took another volleyball championship, Diana Kramer and crew. This is their third in six years, I believe, for Coach Kramer. Her program down there, and well, they've got some talented seniors. The core of their group returns next year, so congratulations to them. Coldwater dropped a straight set uh, final today. They finished second in the state. Congratulations to Coach Etzler and her crew as well. Very impressive day for the Mac and the volleyball sector. As is, as is typical. I, I watched the New Bremen game, and they were machine-like today. Well, in, uh, in 1991, Crestview was in the state tournament and 1,800 people were there. There were that many in one section for the two schools today. Just a huge crowd there in the Nutter Center. Here we go. Here's fourth and six against a four-man rush. That's blocked. I think it was knocked down by Ian Holman, I believe. Yeah, very nice job coming off from his defensive end spot to get a hand up on the ball as the pass was thrown by Caleb Maurer. So with 45 seconds left, Minster will take over. They got decent field position here, Mark. They got the ball just inside the 35. The wind at their back, too, and Steffi's a playmaker. This is a fact. They will get the ball at their own 34-yard line, and neither team has a timeout remaining. And there's just enough snow on the field. Corey, somebody might slip. You know, a defensive back or somebody trying to make a play as a tackle, and that opens up a lane for somebody to catch the ball or run with it. So this would be an opportunity, perhaps, for Minster to tackle on seven before the half comes to an end. If you're Fort Lorimer, you got to be playing deep here and keeping everything in front of you. Five wide set for the Wildcats. Let's get bring four. Here's a pass over the middle and the schmeezing. Put that ball right on the money. Yeah, he got behind Darren Eilerman there, the, the linebacker. 
completed the pass all the way down to the 41 yard line. And here come the Wildcats to the line in a hurry. And we're going to spike that one. There is a, uh, a rule that has changed, Corey. It used to be you could not spike the ball out of the shotgun. It was a five-yard penalty to do so, and they just did it right there. I was looking to see if I remember my new rules correctly or not. I did not know that rule to that yeah, it was. begin with, so I learned something new tonight. Another five-wide set. Three down linemen, plus one off the edge. Over the middle again, Niemeyer. This is Niemeyer right around the 19-yard line. Another first down. That clock will stop momentarily here as the Wildcats rush to the line. Let's see if they spike it again. Plenty of time left, 25 seconds left here. Steffi looking to the sideline. Looks like they'll call a play here before taking the, instead of spiking it. Every pusher electric first down. Mister trying to get on the board before the half. Ball's thrown to the end zone, and it is knocked away. Schmiesig was out there, but so were two defenders. Great defense there, trying to get a number for the Forlorn Redskins there. Looks like maybe Thomas Hoying in coverage in the middle of the field, got his hands up to bat that play down. With 11 seconds remaining. This is the third time the Wildcats here in the first half have been inside the 20, and they've gone 0 for 2 on the previous two drives. You gotta wonder, uh, you know, if they can't get in the end zone, if they want to try Stephanie's leg. They would like to put seven up and not attempt the three, but let's see what happens. Trips right, two receivers left. Throwing the stuff in the throw again. And Looking for Schmeezing again. Got him. Great ball. Right over top of the, the linebacker there in coverage. Perfectly placed football. Connor Schmeezing on the receiving end and the Wildcats with a big touchdown before the half. They go 66 yards, and they do so in 39 seconds. And they're a PAT away from tying this one up at the break. Here's the PAT attempt, broken Steffi. Bad snap. Yeah, it was a bad snap, and the kick will... No. Did not get there. So the bat snap will allow the Redskins to maintain their lead in half. But that drive just went five plays. They went 66 yards, and they did so in 39 seconds. And now they're gonna probably just dribble a football down the middle of the field and make the Redskins pick it up. And then we'll go to the band show with perhaps one play after that. Looking for a perfect gift for out-of-town sports fans? WSN can now be streamed anywhere in the world. Online or Roku and Apple TV for a $100 donate, annual donation. Give the gift of hometown sports for the holidays. Sign up on app.wsn.tv or by downloading our Roku and Apple TV apps. Just thinking about this the other day when I read that, Corey. I always get myself one gift at Christmas, so I know I get at least one thing I want. This could be it. This is just a chance to get this uh, WSN. Rather than have to watch it on my antenna, this might be my, my chance to we, we have the Roku app. Yeah. We have Roku. Yeah. We have the WSN app at home. We we enjoy it very much. I would I would suggest maybe that'd be the perfect stocking stuffer yeah. for you. For me, yeah. I think I'm head that direction. All right. Here's the kickoff attempt by Brogan Steffi, and they do bounce it down the middle of the field and go. Uh oh, look out! Dive on. And yeah, had to dive on it quickly. Very nice heads up play there by the back man. The clock never started. Will Holland dove on the football there deep in Fort Laramie territory. So it was six seconds to go. We we'll assume they're just going to take a knee and get to the halftime break with think, a lead. I think the officials might be talking here. If they touched it, they yeah. might just call the half right here, then and there. No, well, they're going to. He's going to put it down. I thought he touched it, first of all, and I thought second that the clock should have run, but about 50 yards away at midfield, so we'll go with it the way it is. It's all the way back to the eight yard line. Caleb Maurer will take this snap and take a knee. And half number one will come to an end. 
It'll be 14 for the Fort Lauderdale Redskins. It'll be 13 for the Minnesota Wildcats. Second half action coming up. You're watching high school playoff football. WSN. We're back at Sydney Memorial Stadium. Marshawn Coy Britt. Halftime is Fort Lauderdale 14. It's Minster 13. But before we get to the second half, give us some stat numbers from the first half. Minster started the scoring with 9.02 left here in the, in the first quarter of play on a 29 yard run by his quarterback, Brogan Steffi. Extra point was good. The Wildcats took an early 7 0 lead. Fort Lauderdale answered right back on a six yard touchdown pass from Caleb Maurer to Logan Eilerman to tie the score at seven. Then Caleb Maurer with 6.19 left in the second quarter broke off a 47 yard run to give the, to give the Redskins a 14 to seven lead. And then right before the half with six seconds left, Connor Schmeezing caught an 18 yard pass from quarterback Brogan Steffi to cut the lead to 14 to 13 as the extra point was no good due to a bad snap. Uh, stat breakdown, Minster had 10 first downs in the first half, Fort Lormy had five. Rushing yards, Minster rushed it 16 times for 92 yards. Fort Laramie rushed it 14 times for 102. Passing yards, Minster threw it for 117 yards. Fort Laramie threw it for 78 yards. And total offense, that puts the Wildcats at 209 yards of total offense in the first half on 31 plays, while the Redskins finished with 180 on 23 plays. How about some individual numbers because there's some pretty gaudy numbers there by a couple of running backs who have been playing quarterback as well. Yeah, rushing rushing totals, rushing for Brogan Steffi, the quarterback for the Wildcats. He ran it nine times for 74 yards in the first half. And running back Connor Schmeezing for the Wildcats ran it seven times for 18 yards. Leading the way for the Redskins of Fort Laramie, Caleb Maurer, the quarterback, ran it eight times for 97 yards. Darren Eilerman ran it for one time for two yards. Max Maurer one time for two yards. And Will Holland four times for a yard. So the quarterback's definitely getting it done on the ground. On the ground. It is currently 32 degrees. The chill factor has gone to 24. As you can see from our field, we've got some snow that came down during the halftime show. And the Fort Lauderdale band was done. Their bass drums were covered with snow on top. So we're going to have a little bit of perhaps slippery conditions as we head into the half. Second half of play. For Lombardi will get it first. And here's the kickoff by Steffi. And it will hop around and eventually end up Christian McGee. And McGee's got room to run. Look out. He had a big run back earlier in the game. He's going to get this one in the, in the territory that belongs to Mr. Wildcats. Second long return for number 21, Christian McGee. It gives the Redskins great field position all the way out to about the 47 yard line. 48. 48, it looks like is where they're going to put it down. That's his second big run back, and the kicker, Steffi, had to knock him down. He might still be running and put seven on the board. Quarterback is Caleb Maurer. Is that Holland in the back here with it? Yes, sir. It looks like it. Should be a quick handoff. Holland's run left, and will be knocked down as he gets to the 46. Tackle there by Will Frimmel for the Wildcats, number 33. And it looks like number 12, Brogan Steffi, also came up to make the play. Took him two on first down. Make it to second and eight. eight minutes of half number two. New Greenville was up at half. That's who the winners will play. They're over at Greenville tonight. Yeah, that game plays out, and <laughs> ball's going to be thrown towards the end zone. And Looking for Logan Island. Oh, what a play by the quarterback. Yeah, there's a fact. A 46-yard down touchdown pass to Logan Island, who quickly closed in on 100 catches for the season. He had all five catches in the first half. This one chalks up for a touchdown. What a play by Caleb Maurer. He rolled out to the short side of the field here and had to reverse, reverse the grain and roll back the other way and found Logan Heilerman. He threw a perfectly thrown ball to the left corner of the end zone. 46-yard touchdown pass. Three plays, 52 seconds. And they come right out of the shoot and score. Here's the PAT. That sails through. We're 52 seconds into the second half. 
Put on to an eight-point lead. You're watching high school playoff football, Doug Yorkshire. Second touchdown catch of tonight for Logan Eilerman. His 20th touchdown catch of the year. And his, what, 98th catch overall in the season? Correct. The year he's got going on right now. Even more importantly, if you're a Redskin, your team now leads by eight. Great starts the first half. You got the great kickoff return by Christian, Christian McGee. And two plays later, you find yourself in the end zone. And the Redskins quickly push their lead to eight. Big Boland to kick off. Jesus bounces it down the middle of the field and will hop into the hands of Dylan Heitkamp. Heitkamp trying to get room to run the far side. He's going to get dragged down before he gets to the 35-yard line. Nice tackle there on the far sideline to get his number as he comes trotting this way. Number 21. Christian McGee on the nice tackle dragged him down there on the far sideline. A good special teams player this evening. Also on the 33 yard line where Broken Steffi and crew will take over. Connor Schmiesing joins him in the backfield. Steffi will keep it himself and bounce it wide. And we'll get knocked out of bounds as he gets close to the 40-yard line in the seven-yard pickup. Really good fake there by Steffi. Looked like he gave it to Schmeezing in the backfield and had about three or four Redskins there tackling Schmeezing for a pull and take him along the right end. They give him six to the 39-yard line, second and four. Steffi and Schmeezing in the backfield again. Steffi Webker. Along with James Niemeyer to the bottom of your screen. Quick out. And that's low and not unable to secure it as Wetker. Falls incomplete. Makes it third down to the 39. Mister ended the half there on that really quick touchdown strike. It looked like they found some things they liked there in the middle of the defense for Fort Warming. See if they don't look to go back to that here on a big third down possession. Same formation as the last play. Wetker, Niemeyer. Hand off, Schmeezing, and Schmeezing will go down before he can get to the 40-yard line. So it'll be fourth down, Wildcats. And they will put the football down right at the 40. That makes it a one-yard game. And here comes the punt team in. Good stop by Fort Warman, forcing the punt, and then get their offense the ball back. And into the win this time for Brady Wolf. Just a single deep back. They're going to play a gadget play. Nope, now he's going to bring it back and punt it. Those guys run all over play. Clay Clack getting away from him, though, and they just get the snap off. And that one goes right at the elevator shaft. The wind blows it out of bounds. Good field position for the Redskins. Yeah, Fort Worth is going to get it right at the 48-yard line, it looks like. So great field position for the black and red. With exactly 10 minutes to go here in the third quarter. They get the ball on their own 48-yard line. Long won the matchup between these two teams back in August, August 19th. They had lost 12 consecutive games before winning back in 2021. And now they've won two in a row, trying to make it three. Power in motion. And it's going to be the flea flicker. flicker. Play. Got him open. Had two guys open. And what a comeback to the football. Really good adjustment by Max Mauer. A little brother. Little brother made Big Brother look pretty good that time. Yeah, he did. He made a really good adjustment to the ball. Because we're going to get a Busher Electric first down. They hustle back to the line of scrimmage. The ball's at the 17. That's a 31-yard pickup. Holland, the ball 
ball carrier here for the Redskins. Holler will spin inside the 15. Busher Electric is a full service electrical contractor servicing the area communities for over 40 years. And they are sponsoring our first downs this evening. You can depend on Busher Electric for all your electrical needs. The ball got to the 14 yard line on that run. He's second down. Nice job by number 51 there, Gabe Bornhorst, the linebacker, to plug the hole there to make the tackle. Holler and Mauer in the backfield. Here's Mauer to throw. Guns it over the middle, it's a bit high. Looking for Christian McGee there across the middle, just missed them a little, a little over the top. A good coverage by the Wildcats there, they were all over that one. All five of Mauer's first half completions had gone to Logan Ireland. Now he has found Max Mauer here in this half, and just went over the top, and never quite reeled in to McGee. Third and seven. I haven't seen a designed run yet. He went for, Caleb ran for 97 yards in the first half. Let's see if they don't go back to Maurer here on a designed run. There's a pass. Good hands. Is it Ireland? Yes, it was. Yes, it was. What a great set of hands he had right there. That ball was a bit wide of him. He still reeled it in. Picked up a push from electric first down. Down to the five-yard line. Is trying to blow this one open. Chance to go up two scores and a total of 15 points. Here's Mauer. Hand off Holland, bouncing it wide. Cuts it back inside. Good cut back. You get down to about the three. Will Fremel, number 33 on the tackle, number 26 also there, Will Kanapke. Well, we've called Fremel's name a lot tonight, haven't we? Yeah, he's done a nice job pursuing the football and making some tackles. Looks like the football is actually going to go down at about the four-yard line. It'll be second down. Probably uh, trots off to the sideline. Trips left, two receivers right for Caleb Maurer. Empty formation here, could be a quarterback draw for the Redskins. They're gonna run it right with him instead. He ducks inside and gets into the end zone. Or did he? Yes, he did. From four yards out, a Maurer touchdown run. Nice read by Caleb. It looked like they wanted to go with that quarterback sweep again, and he put his foot in the turf. And found an opening to get up upfield in a hurry. Two touchdown passes, two touchdown runs, Caleb Maurer. See if they tack on the PAT here by Bolin. Good job, ball now, and he got it. Will got it through, a good job special teams wise, and it will be a 23-28-13 lead. Fort Long Bay, 7.35 to go here in quarter number three. You're watching high school playoff football, Club USA. My scoreboard is sponsored by Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alts. Let Structure Outdoor Ohio bring your indoors out. And that scoreboard shows the Fort Lauderdale Redskins 28, the Minister Wildcats 13. The Army has come out and put scores on the board here. A touchdown pass to Ireland, touchdown run by Maurer. Really can't script it a better start in the second half of Fort Lauderdale and Coach Wells taking the opening kickoff, getting a big play, striking again on the long pass getting the three and out in a hurry, and then marching right back down the field for another long touchdown. So, picture X start here for the Redskins in the second half. See what Seth Whiting and company has to go here do with the Wildcats. As they got now trail by 15, and Bowen's having trouble getting the ball, stay on the tee. A little windy out there. In fact, the wind has picked up just looking at the flag. Looks like Lewis Hart's gonna hold it here for him. Dry kick and skip around. Schmeezing picks it up. Schmeezing. Got a big hole. Look out, he does. Up the sideline he goes. He gets run out of bounds. 
Good special teams play for Minster. Good start for this possession. And he is near the about the 46, I guess, where they pushed him out of bounds. Our annual fundraising campaign is underway. Support us as we aim to reach our goal of $200,000 by the end of the year. Our current goal is $65,000. Thank you for your generous donation to the new year of WOSA and WTLW. Schmeezing in the backfield along with Steffi. Steffi guns it over the middle. It's Kaus. spot. Cows, good tackle. But not until he picked up a Bushel Electric first down. Nice throw there. Again, they went with a double slant pattern. I think he could have had either him or Webker wide open running through the middle of the field. Actually, I thought it was headed to Webker until he stepped up and grabbed it. I mean, obviously, there were two guys there to throw it to, and he picked out the correct target. First down on the 41 of Fort Laramie. There's Steffi to run off right tackle. He will bounce forward to about the 35-yard line, pick up a six on first down. Good push there to start the second half. And we got an injured Redskin down. That we do. And while they take care of the injured player, we're going to take a break. You're watching high school playoff football at WOSA. Your player was Isaac Ratterman. He came off to play Gibby. We'll see if he's able to get himself back in the play before this one comes to an end. We certainly wish Isaac the best. Second and four, Minster on this drive. For Steffi to throw. He rolls, throws. Got a guy over the middle. Nice catch. It was. Is that? James Niemeyer. It is Niemeyer. Really nice play. Really good ball by Steffi. He had some pressure to his right there. He stepped off, didn't have his feet underneath him, was still able to throw a good pass. And Niemeyer makes the diving catch for a Minster first down. 13 yard pickup on a push from Electric first down. Steffi has sneezing on his left hip this time. Steffi will pick up perhaps a yard. Gabe Hart and. It looked like Lewis Hart, his twin brother, on the tackle. So the twins ganging up there, making the play for the Redskins. He did pick up a yard, make it second and nine as we're halfway through quarter number three. Very important drive for Minster to get back into this one. Steffi and Dylan Heitkamp come into the huddle together. Dylan wears number eight. He will head to the right side as part of the three-man formation to that side. Stephen rolls right. Being chased and throws. Oh, yeah, he just threw it over High Camp's head. Yeah, he might have been actually going for Chase Cowson, who was right behind him. And one of those, one of those plays where it looked like the one earlier. Yeah. Where we weren't sure who they were going through, Webker or uh, Niemeyer there, but. Uh, it does seem like when they flood those zones that there's a lot of guys out there that, that could be potential receivers. This is going to be a third down play. This is a big one. In four down territory, but third and nine from the 21. Here's Steffi. He'll have three receivers left and two to his right. And... We're going to have a pound it from the back judge here. Yeah, delay game. What his call was. Yes, it was. That'll take him back to the 26-yard line. And make this third down even more difficult. They need to get to the uh, 12 for a first down as they re-huddle. Been close to that play clock a few times. I wasn't watching at that time. Obviously, it got away from him. Yeah, it looks like Stephanie goes and gets the play almost every play from Coach Whiting. So here's Stephanie Brogan. Blitz coming. Blitz coming. He makes the first guy miss. Now he's going to his left and runs up the sideline. Really nice play by Brogan, Stephanie. Wow, what a play! What an athlete. 
great job by Brogan Steffi. Escapes the initial blitz from Lewis Hart by spinning out of it. And then outruns Cotner to the corner and gets down to the 10 yard line. Is it gonna be first and goal? Yes, yep, they're gonna drop the sticks. It's gonna be first and goal for the Wildcats. Right at the 10 yard line, that was a 16 yard pickup, but he could have lost eight. Big time play for Remind me of that young man as a sophomore, will you? Goodness, wow. two years to go in his career here at Minster. See how he finishes up the sophomore season right now. Man in motion is schmeezing. Steffi, what happened? We got a penalty flag on the play. False start. Yeah. Somebody moved and pointed towards somebody in the interior. So that'll back him up to the 15 yard line. I thought Schmeezing got set. I didn't think it was on him. And I pointed towards somebody in the interior line who moved. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't catch the number up here in the booth, but regardless, it's going to be first and goal from now from the 15-yard line from Minster, so tough goal-to-go spot here starting at the 15. Probably Schmeezing checked in. He wears 81. Music sets up behind Broken Steffi. It'll be Steffi to throw. Pressure comes up the middle again. He has to run again. He's been brought hold. down to 15. We got a hold, don't we? Yeah. Max Cottoner really did a nice job of applying pressure up the gut there for Fort Laramie, and he was grabbed up around the shoulders. So right around the 15-yard line where this play began, and they could be. I mean, the drive began on the 10. That's going to be yeah. second and goal from the. From the 31 yard line, first and goal from the 31. Like Yet another penalty back to the 31 yard line. And I think that's where they're going to mark it off to. Nope, just back to the 20. Uh, the half the distance. And well, I think the headlines is coming over. They're going to discuss where this penalty ought to go. They want, the lines wants to go back another five. Clock five Resetting the game clock to 5:22. I guess it is going to be at the 25. Well, I'm not sure I quite understand the penalty of that situation, but that's where we're at. Second and goal from the 25. Fort Laramie bringing some pressure again. Minster really does a nice job of picking it up. This is out on the outside. Wow. And good tackle on the far side. Webker made the catch. Yeah, Dylan Sanders made a really good tackle. If he doesn't make that tackle, Webker's going to go into the end zone. But might be even more impressive as Brogan Steffi throwing that ball from the far side of the field all the way over there on the line. Correct. They got it down to the 11 where it is third down. Steffi again to throw. Over the middle it goes. And we're going to get a flag in the end zone. And pass interference. Yep. Trying to get it to Connor Schmeezing, and he was grabbed in the end zone. So this penalty will make it half the distance to the goal here. And a first down, correct? That's still be third down. That's correct. Right. It's not an automatic first down in high school. That is correct. So it's half the distance. That will make it down to the six, where it will be third down. Yeah, that's that's a college and NFL rule. It is not automatic in high school. It certainly improves the situation, however, for Minster. We can have a couple of shots now from the six-yard line. Desperately in need of a score on the Wildcats. Gives it to Schmeezing. Honor Schmeezing gets inside the five, and that's as far as he can go. Taken down from behind by Damian Bruns. And Isaac Rotterman back on the field for the Redskins takes down Schmeezing. And it's going to be fourth and four. Fourth and goal from the fourth. You can see Isaac back in the game. Just from simply from a health standpoint. And now we are in a huge 
fourth and four. Redskins fans yeah. urging their fans their feet, and it looks like Coach Whiting's going to take a timeout for the Wildcats. That's a huge play for Coach Whiting. We're going to break also with 4-11 to go here in quarter number three. Timeout for watching high school playoff football, WSN. We're back at City Memorial Stadium. We got a little bit of disagreement right now. And we see our officials with the huddle point. I've got third down on my play sheet. The scorebook says, the uh, scorebook says four. Yeah, I think the confusion was one of the penalties here on this drive was actually on second down. And the down marker might have turned to third. And we're going to get the call right here. It looks like they're still discussing and there's a lot of talk up here in the booth and there's a lot of belief that should be third down like yeah. you have, Mark. I've got third on my play sheet. That's not always accurate. I don't know what the officials have, obviously. Let's see what our official Brian Cricket says. He's going to huddle up one more time with his crew again. And it, I, I have to compliment the officials here. This is this is a huge play here. Take your time. Make sure we get it right. Um, you don't want to short anybody a down. Um, big possession, We've got to make sure we get it right. So I compliment the officials taking their time, getting together and making sure we're, we're, we're doing things right here. Uh, agreed. You know, we're in the regional semifinals of a 28-13 game with 4-11 to go. There's a whole lot of difference between third and four and fourth and four on this upcoming play. Let's see what our, what our call is here. He's going to walk over here to Coach Wells and that first. And they did change the down marker to third down, so it does yeah. look like it's going to be third and four. See the explanation? That's a good thing, too. Let, let the coach know what's going on and explain things to him. And he gets a, that's a good move as well. What questions do you have about life? Questions you have about God and about things happening in your community or family. You get answers when you watch life questions each week. Four local pastors will discuss relevant topics and answer questions submitted by people just like you. Life questions on TV 44 Sundays at 1.30 and Wednesdays at 9.30. And you can find it also online at www.com. And it is third down. Really nice job by the officials. Yes, sir. Schmeezing in the backfield along with Steffi. There's Steffi, and he runs inside. Did he get to the goal line or not? Looks like he's going to be. He's in. Yeah, he's got, he's got it across the nose of the football. Good push by, four, by the Minster offensive line. They say he got the nose across the end zone. Touchdown, Wildcats. That he did. A four-yard Steffi TD run. Cuts it to 28-19. Had a 29-yard touchdown run in the opening half, did Steffi. Really nice answer by the Minster, Minster offense right there. March down the field, got the big score. They're going to kick the field goal here to try to cut it to eight. Steffi is the PAT guy, as we've talked about before. He was 38 of 42. Coming into the night, a bad snap cost him one back on the second score. Really big play here. And right to it, they're going to go for two. Lobs it to the end zone. It's out of the way. Huge, huge stop on the two-point conversion by the Fort Lauderdale defense. Keeps the score at a two-point game. Makes it 28-19 with 4.06 to go. That was a 54-yard drive. And it took them nine plays to do that. And looking at the clock, it took them three minutes and 29 seconds. But a big defensive play on the PAT attempt as Fort Lauderdale will get the football back. Well, that uh, if you're a Minster Wildcat, that nine points looks a whole lot different than seven or, or eight. Yeah, that's, I mean, they got a great drive. Fort Lauderdale makes the big two-point two conversion stand, so it's still a two-score lead. The winner will get the winner of New Bremen and Sonia next week, and Ansonia just scored to take a two-point lead with six minutes left. Tell me you're watching the WSN app, right? I am. Yeah, there Getting you go. all the updates from WSN. <laughs> all right, here's Broken Steffi to kick off. Let's see if they don't kick away from number 21, Christian McGee. He's been about one tackle away from busting the long one tonight all night. He's had a couple of big run backs this evening on kickoffs. Into the win. 
Logan Steffi kicked it to the far side of the field. And it hops out of bounds. Wise offensive play to follow the ball out of bounds and get the ball in the 35-yard line. Real heads up play by uh, number 11, Will Holland there, the junior running back. He could have picked that up and been sort of cornered there about the four yard line and smartly elects it to go out of bounds and Fort Lauderdale will take over on the third, at the 35 yard line. Took a bit of a chance for him, but it worked out for him. Now with a nine point lead and 4.06 to go here in the third. And the 35 yard line will go the Fort Lauderdale Redskins. They've had two possessions in half number two. They have scored on both of them. The lead is at nine. Mauer to throw. Just a three-man rush, and we'll dip back up to about the 37. Will Fremel on the tackle. Would have been wise to just Put tape recording, Frimmel tackle, and just push a button. We wouldn't have to say it so often. He has had a very nice defensive game after a two-yard pickup. Good, uh, good job by the front of Minster there. They, they didn't over rush there, over pursue. When Caleb tucked it and, and went there, they were ready for him. Play clock already down at 15. There's Mauer again, Holland in the backfield with him. To be Mauer. Plenty of time, and now he breaks containment and takes off. Slides for a first down over the 45 yard line. That will be a Bush Electric first down. Good job of, of Caleb just taking what the defense gives him, not, not making a mistake, and taking it off and using his feet again wisely. Let those DBs run deeper with those offensive receivers and give you a little bit more space to run. First down on their own 46-yard line. Offensive line from Fort Lauderdale is really can start to control this one up front, giving Caleb Maurer a lot of time. And Maurer will run to his right this time. He will be approaching midfield. Turns the Jets on and gets out of bounds. Ran right away from the tackle of Niemeyer. Three consecutive Mauer runs have started from their own 35-yard line. They're now on the 46 of Finster. That will be an eight-yard pickup right there. There's a guy hustling in real quickly here to play. Trying to get somebody off the field as well. Mr. just does get that accomplished. Here's Holland running left. And he's going to go down in the backfield. Fribble and number 81, Charlie Schmeezing there on the tackle. So it'll be third down for Fort Warren. Is, is the future bright for Coach Whiting? And obviously, we've got 227 left in this one. Fribble's a sophomore also. Yeah, they have young kids all over the place. So obviously, Steffi is a sophomore as well. So, I mean, anytime you have your signal caller back for a third straight year, um, that'll help. Niemeyer's just a sophomore. Connor Schmeezing is a sophomore. So they've got some people back, particularly in their skilled positions. Some of the guys up front are as well. <laughs> did he pick up the first down? I think Mauer did, didn't he? Yes, he did. Just got enough there and cut back up, up the field and just did enough to get the Redskins the first down. He gets to the 43-yard line. Got three that time on the Bush Electric first down. Another good drive for Fort Lauderdale here. A couple first downs, keeping that clock moving. That would be correct. By the time we snap this, well, they'll run about three minutes off the clock. Since the Mr. score. Trips right, two receivers left for Maurer. Quick pass out. Darren Island on the catch. Yep. And he will make the first guy miss and will get down almost to the 35 yard line. Good run after catch by Darren Eilerman. And he 
gets to about the 36 yard line. That's a seven yard pickup. Good safe pass there. Something that they can catch and keep the clock running, but still pick up positive yardage there. Good call by Coach Wells. Same formation as the last play. Play clock running down, and they get it off. Same play on the side, yeah. Getting the first down. That will be knocked down right about the 30-yard line. Yeah, Darren Eilerman again on the catch. Big physical run as he caught it and turned up field and lowered his shoulder. Picked up another yard or two. Ball all the way down to the 30 now. Fort Lorman is going to have to take one more yeah. snap here. They have to run one more play before this quarter comes to an end. The football is right at the 30-yard line, following that Bushel Electric first down. And, uh, Coach Wells saying, let's hurry up and get this one play in. It's not a time for a five-yard penalty. And there we go. Here's the handoff. Eilerman again, big yardage. Big yardage for him. He gets down to about 29. And we got a penalty on the play. Yes, we do. Oh, looks like unsportsmanlike conduct on Minster here. The quarter comes to an end. Or does it? Dead, dead ball for penalty right after the quarter would have ended. Or do we have to run a play yet? Once again, we have our officials with a good conference now trying to figure out how we're going to play this. We're going to keep it right here until we figure it out as well. Yeah, just another, just another odd one that probably doesn't happen a whole lot on Friday or Saturday nights. The clock did hit zeros. And then we had a penalty following the completion of the play. Portion like conduct will go against Minster. Take the ball to the 10 yard line. One untimed down. We'll have an untimed down. So it ends up being a 26 yard play, run plus penalty. And looking to see where the mark is. Can he get a first down? Looks like he can. Yeah, they're going to put the sticks down just outside the 10, so you can get one at the half yard line. Untimed down here from Sydney Memorial Stadium. Now to take the snap, he does so. Set Ireland again. Yeah, and he got to about the 10. That will bring our third quarter to an end. Mr. Down the fourth army, 28-19. We'll come back to the fourth. You're watching high school playoff football, Jeff Wilson. Fourth quarter action from Sydney Memorial Stadium. Our scoreboard is sponsored by Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alts. Let Structure Outdoor Ohio bring your indoors out. Army Redskins as we begin quarter number four on the nine yard line of Minster. It'll be second and nine. They can get a first down just inside the one. A shining court Britain here. Cold, snowy night here in Sydney. Week three of the high school playoff season. Now oh, hands off the bird. Reverse. It's one of the it. special. Throw into the end zone and it's caught. It's caught. Kick him out. Caught the touchdown. Christian McGee. Wow. Christian McGee threw it up and somehow out deep center field. Caleb Mauer made the catch. Actually, pretty well defended play. Mr. Guys were back there at Kayla Maurer showing his senior expertise, just went and got it out of the air, and that makes it 34 19. As we're eight 
seconds into this quarter. Big extra point here makes it 16. Here's the PAT attempt. Bowen. And he hammers it through. So that went 10 plays. They did so in four minutes and the 14 seconds. And they went 65 yards. And with the PAT, they do have that lead that you talked about. That would be 35-19. And with a 16-point deficit, now you got two scores and two PAT, two two-point PATs that Minster needs. Well, Mark, I, you, you've coached sports long enough just like I have when plays like that sort of go in your direction you know it might just be your kind of night that ball was up there for a long time and somehow amongst four Minster Wildcats Caleb Maurer caught it in the end zone so big pass play um, for Lormy pushes their lead to 16 but wouldn't count out these Minster Wildcats they've been able to march up and down the field all night and just haven't been able to capitalize when they've gotten inside the 20 yard line but they've They've had lots of opportunities, and there's a lot of time left for them. Well, that's, you know, Corey, it's kind of why you got seniors on scholarship, right? Here's a senior, McGee, making a pass to the end zone. Here's a senior, Maurer, going up and getting it in traffic. You know, you just kind of you want your seniors to do that on big nights and big games. 100%. Fort Army's leaning on their seniors big time tonight. Ball's going to be dribbled down the middle of the field. And eventually it's going to be picked up and brought down right at about the 30 yard line. And there's another senior right there, number 32, Darren Eiler, and makes the play. So 11.49 to go. Mr. Wildcats need a couple of scores and need one on this possession right here. Ball is right at the 32, according to the scoreboard. Let's see where the officials choose to put it down. That looks to be correct. Comes Broken Steffi and crew. They scored the last time they had the football. That was a 10 play drive, 9 play drive. Just got Connor Schmeezing in the backfield with him. And in motion, fake it to him. Now swing pass out to him. That's a nice play. Caught out here by Chase Kaus. Good pass, good catch. Good start to the drive for the Wildcats. That's one of those seniors that plays for Coach Whiting. Picked up eight on first down. Steffi again. Plenty of time left for the Wildcats, too. They, they don't need to be in any kind of hurry here. Run your offense and, and just make good decisions back there. Blitz gets picked up. It's lofted out. It's caught on the far side of the field by Niemeyer. Yep. Right at about just shy of the 50. No, nope, they're going to mark him right at the 50-yard line. So. Either way, it's a Busher Electric first down. Busher Electric is a full-service electrical contractor servicing the area communities for over 40 years. You can depend on Busher Electric for all your electric needs. It is right at midfield. Pushed out of bounds, stopping the clock at 11.02. Here's Steffi, runs it up the middle this time, but Calvin, not far. Calvin Hoyne was all over it for the Redskins. The middle linebacker, leading tackler, and captain for the Redskins. Still got about three. 65 pounds, Steffi took some contact, was able to fall forward. 47-yard line. And we're going to make somebody leave. I don't know. Uh, Damian Burns. Burns. Yeah. Took a minute to get the number on it. Calder Bergman in for the Redskins now, replacing him. Nope. He's going to draw off now, and Jason Siegel's going to come on now for Fort Norman. Looks like they're looking at the, the knee. I think uh, Burns has some uh, cut on his knee or something. It's got some blood anyway. Here's handoff, Connor Schmeezing. Makes, Makes one man miss. 
And runs into a bunch of red skins and still keeps fighting. He's going to get a first down. Really nice hard running by the by the sophomore Connor Schmeezing. And it was. Bush electric first down to the 39 yard line. Spun away from one and put his nose down and got a little help from his offensive lineman. Pushed forward for a first down. Eight yard pickup. Here come the Wildcats again. Schmeezing in the backfield with Steffi. So be Schmeezing again off left tackle. He's got a big run. run. Look out. Schmeezing gets the corner and then finally gets run out of bounds, but not till he picks up to get another first down. The guy's got some wheels, 5'6", 155. Really nice, nice job by the Minster offensive line on that left side. Did a great job of blocking, holding up, letting Schmeezing turn that corner for a big game. Ian Holman, Gabe Barnhorst, Keaton Sharp, Fletcher Luthman, Nick Winter. Guys up front creating space to the 22-yard line to push for electric first down. He flopped the formation over. Play clock winding down, and they get it off. Yeah, it looked like somebody was moving, didn't it? I didn't see a flag. Here's Steffi throwing towards the end zone. Got Webker. He did, and it's like a catch on the far side. Just a win very quickly to the market. Yep. Nice job again by Steffi, avoiding that blitz. Darren Eilerman was coming hard from the back side there, and he stepped away from it. And just like that, Minster's got the ball at the five here. 17-yard pickup, first down to five. Here come the Wildcats. Steffi will run it himself. Fumbled it, fumbled it, loose. Here it was. Recovered by Thomas Horn. It's going to be four Army football. Well, how many times now have they been down knocking on the door? They were there a couple, three times in the first half. They were there this time, this time turned away by, I believe that's the first turnover of the game. Yes, it is. You're right, Mark. Minster's, Minster's been marching down the field all night long. It just seems like they just can't punch it in when they really need to. They've, they've made the drives. They've put themselves in great position, just haven't been able to capitalize. And, and right there is another, another example of that. Fort Lauderdale's defense bending, but not breaking. Opening half, Minster out yardage. Fort Lauderdale in the opening half. So here's Maurer in the backfield alone this time. They've, they've ran a lot of QB draw from this formation tonight. And they're going to run it again, but not this time, because right there to make the tackle is Charlie Schmiesen. 81, yeah, really nice play to get in the backfield, beat his block, and Fort Lorme is going to be in the shadows of their own goalpost here. Ball's back to the three-yard line. That makes it second and 13. Fort Army wants to take their time here. That is correct. They will be punting into a very significant win if they don't pick up this first down. That certainly is what Minster is hoping for. Hand off. Eilerman right up the middle. And we'll get back to the original line of scrimmage, perhaps a bit more. And they'll give him about the seven yard line, so it'll be third and nine. 51 there, Gabe Bornhorst there to make the tackle. It's going to be third and nine now for Fort Lorme. And the winner of this coming from the WOSN app is going to get New Bremen as they were 26-22 winners over Ansonia scoring a touchdown in the final minute to beat the Tigers. You know, the year New Bremen won the state tournament back in 17, 18, 19, whatever that was, it's like every week they won on the last play of the game, you know, <laughs> or, or something similar to that anyway. Here's Maurer facing a critical, and we're going to get a timeout. Time yep. Yeah, I saw the play clock coming down. They ran it down to the gates. There's just 8.03 left here in quarter number two. We're going to break also. You're watching high school playoff football, WOSN. <laughs> Initial timeout of the second half from the Fort Lauderdale Redskins as the play clock was winding down. They are facing a third and nine from their own seven yard line. 
Let's see if Maurer and Eilerman hook up here for the hundredth time this year. There's Maurer. And he's going to roll right, got somebody in his face, and just pitches it out of bounds. And it's a play by the senior. Yeah, a really smart play. Didn't want to make a mistake. Now let's see if the punt team can protect and hold up long enough to get the ball out of their own end zone. Likewise, really good job by Minster to hold and get the football back, probably in pretty good field position. To give their offense a chance to get on the board here. The disappointment of the fumble from the possession earlier. Caleb Maurer is going to punt this one just in about from the middle of the end zone. Minster's going to get great field position, so their defense holds strong after that fumble. That they did. Here they come after him, and he just does get it away. There goes. Oh, Kaus. good run. Look out. Uh-oh. Really nice return by Kaus. Makes a couple yeah. guys miss. Those orange beanies or those penalty uh, flags? No, nope, there is a penalty flag on the play. Looks like they're going to get called for a clip. I don't know anybody who likes the orange bean bag. They look too much like that yellow flag when they first come <laughs> flying out. Yeah, they're going to get Minster here for clipping on the far side of blocking the back. Those things all began back in COVID when you couldn't touch the football. So they put that orange thing down so the center would know where to use the ball. And uh, now they've kind of continued on to the marking when a ball is caught in the air or something like the punt return right there. That's going to go back to the 45 yard line. So Minster still in good field position with 7.43 to go. Again, Minster just down two scores here, so you have plenty of time. You don't need to be in any kind of big hurry. First goal's got to be the score. Three receivers to the right, plus Smeezing in the slot. Throwback. Got a screen set up. Oh, all over it. Yeah. All over it. Isaac Rotterman, the senior defensive man was all over it for Fort Warming. Well, I said a moment ago, I was glad for the senior's sake he was able to get back on the field and compete. I'm not sure Minster wanted to see him out there right now. That's great coaching. Brad Froehling, the defensive coordinator for the Fort Warming Redskins. You can tell they were well schooled on that play. Seven yard loss, it's second and 17. Blitz coming up the middle, they pick it up. Looking for Webker. Missed him on the sideline. That ball was in the air for a long, long time. Of course, Minster is playing with the wind here in this quarter. And now all of a sudden it's third and 17. Seven oh one to go. This time the receivers will go three by two. Here's Blitz, bringing a bunch of them. Quick pass out, and that's incomplete. He tried to find Dylan Heitkamp, he couldn't get it to him. Yeah, tried to set up a little tunnel screen there, and Fort Warming got a little bit too much pressure in his face. And pass was just a little bit inaccurate. And big fourth down here. Next to the big play by Ratterman a moment ago. They're looking at fourth and 17. Got to get all the way down to the 35-yard line of the Redskins on this play, or they have to turn it over on down. You can see Logan Steffi over to the sidelines talking with his coach, and they're going to talk about punt. Yeah, they're going to punt. Count there. They better hurry. The play clock's at four. And... Got it off. That snap in a hurry. Now he's gonna get it off the punt. Yeah. Yeah, that play clock was running down and they just tried to in a hurry snap it and just didn't get enough on that snap and the ball skipped back to the punter. Brady Wolf did a great job of fielding it and just didn't have much of a chance to do much with it there as Port Norman was back there in a hurry. And they tried to rush everything and get it off after the decision was made and save a timeout. Just wasn't quite able to do so. And they'll take over on the 33-yard line of Minster already with a 16-point lead. There's Caleb Maurer in the backfield. He 
He's going to let this play clock run a bit. No reason to. The game clock's over. Here we go. Hand off. Darren Eilerman. Eilerman. Big, strong Darren Eilerman. He's doing a really nice job of finding holes and running really hard, putting his shoulder down. Number 81, Charlie Schneezing there on the tackle for the Wildcats. Eilerman, 6'3", 190, and he has a load to bring down as he picks up seven on first down. Now we'll let that play clock run. You see Maurer looking to the sideline, getting the call from his coach. His coach even delays a little bit to get the play call in so they don't get anxious at the line of scrimmage. Hey, Redskins got to be very content of letting this play clock run inside of five every time before they snap it. Which they just did. And a flag came in on this one. Fight towards the first down. It's not going to come back, however. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like they got a little bit of a hold there on the right, right side of the offensive line. You see the flag was right around the 25-yard line where it was thrown. Let's see what our call is. It is a hold. We'll bring the Redskins back. Still be second down. We're back to the 36-yard line. 5.55 to go. Clock will continue to run, though, so that is in Fort Lauderdale's favor. They're going to get an extra down here with the clock running. I kind of wonder, since we were even one, if that game doesn't end up back here next to Saturday night. It's yeah. A good location for those schools, much like Minster and Larmy. Correct. And St. Mary's can be a possible location along with Walpaw. So, yeah, it won't be a far drive for either school. There's a handoff. Got 32. No, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, 32 the ball carrier. John Keller for the Wildcats in on the sample. Picked up a, a couple. We'll be down to the 34 yard line. And it will be third down. Looking at about 11. Coach Wells is going to take his time to get this play call called in. He's not in any hurry down there. Play clock approaching 15. What could well be a four down situation for Coach Wells. Well, we'll keep it this time and another room to run. Tried to duck back inside and there was Fletcher Luthman. Yeah, 74 was coming hard on the backside. Caleb just decided to take a little seat there to save himself. And it will now be fourth down. See what the Redskins decide to do. Maybe punt the ball here and pin them deep, or you go for it here and keep the clock running. Coach Wells might just let this run down and call a timeout as well. He's standing down there by the official. Play clock is at 10. Yeah, he's, he's, uh, it looks like he's down there in the ear of the official on the sideline. And it goes to two, and there's his timeout. 402 to go. Our annual fundraising campaign at WTLW is underway. Support us as we aim to reach our goal of $200,000 by the end of the year. Current total is at $65,000. Thank you for your donation to launch us into the new year. Second timeout called for by the Fort Army Redskins. They are facing fourth down from their own third from the 38th of Minster. Coach, you play a lot in the Shelby County League basketball. What's your league looking like this year? Uh, it's going to be really good, competitive as always. Um, it's been it's been a meat grinder the last <laughs> last couple years. Uh, it's not going to be any different this year. Jackson Center, Rushiana, Bakins is going to be really good again this year. Uh, Everybody's going to have to be uh, bringing on a Friday night if, if you're going to want to get out alive in our league again this year. So. In, in your league, you got to find a way to score. You guys got some of the best defensive coaches and best defensive uh, programs around. Yeah, I tell you what, it's it's a physical brand of basketball, and defense wins the game. Here's the punt. We'll kick it up in the air and see where it lands. That's a really good punt, and it's going to hop sideways. Mm, Forlorn will down that around the 23-yard line. 
a Minster with 351 to go, and they need points in a hurry. They've proven they can do it. I think they scored that touchdown right at the end of the half in about 45 seconds. So it was correct. They had that quick strike offense in the back pocket. See if they can't go to it here in a hurry and, and make this one interesting. Logan Steffi's gotten receivers. He's got Connor Schmees. He could catch it or run with the football. Niemeyer's had a really good year catching the football. So is Webker. So let's see if what they're able to get going here from round 23. They do have two timeouts remaining. See how the Redskins choose to play. They're going to play by coming after him. Here's the pass caught by Wetker up around the 40. Tackled by Thomas Hoying there, but a great, great start to the drive for the Wildcats. Steffi puts it right on Wetker's number there and gets the drive started with a big completion all the way out to the 40 yard line. 17 yard pickup and a Bush Electric first down. Back to the line of scrimmage they come. Plus just four this time as he rolls to his left and snap throw out. Caught on the far side of the field by Heitkamp. He got out of bounds too. That helps the Wildcat cause all the way out to the 45 yard line once again. Another Bush electric first down as he gets to the 45 yard line of the Fort Lauderdale Redskins. That would be a 15 yard pickup. Picked up 32 yards in two plays. Receivers go two by two this time with Connor sneezing in the backfield. Music helps pick up the blitz. Lop the over Gauss. Oh, I thought he had it. Great ball by Steffi. Put it right in between double coverage there. Thomas Hor or Christian McGee and D uh, Dylan Sanders there on the coverage for the Redskins. Just outside the outstretched hands of, of Chase Kaus. Chase Kaus listed at 5'9", 130. Had an opportunity to make a difficult catch that time. I think somebody grabbed him as he was trying to reel it in. A legal play, but still contact as the ball got there. His receivers two by two yet again on this possession. Nope, but now this time, they make it trips. John Keller becomes an extra receiver in this. Out pattern. That one got away from him. That was one of those long passes from the opposite from the opposite hatches all the way to the far sideline. Tough throw for anybody to make. Third down and ten now from the 45 of Fort Army. Steffi will be alone in the backfield this time. And he will roll right against the Calvin Hoyne is coming after him. Grabbed him by the jersey and won't let him go. He's got a sack. Big time play by the linebacker. Calvin Hoying, the senior. This seems to be a night where if you're a senior wearing red and black, you have really stepped up. Yeah, this, this, it's, it's a senior-laden team for, for Fort Lauderdale, man. Those, and those seniors have made big-time plays, whether it's been Caleb Maurer, Calvin Oy, Logan Eilerman, Christian McGee. The seniors have made big-time plays. Mister has taken a timeout with 2.45 to go. They are facing a crucial fourth and 15 from midfield. And uh, I, I have to understand the, the reason, Corey, with this one. That this is the football game right here. They need 15 yards or this one's going to be over. 100%. Yeah, Minster needs a big play here. They need to be in the right play. You need to get in the right play. Make sure you guys, we talk about it, you guys talk about it, and, and get in the right formation and get a successful play call. So timeouts don't matter if you don't get it here anyway. So you might as well take one and, and get in the, in the proper formation and, and a play you're comfortable with. Each team will have one timeout remaining. As we head into the 2.45 remaining in this one. Make sure you catch the sports report on Friday nights on WTLW. Basketball season's about to start. The camera and the crew will be out covering as many high school games on Friday nights as they can. Give you all the updates. Local beat for sales on the scoreboard. Turn now at East. 
Tri Village. Games that we were covering tonight on WOSN. Talk about a place for those two teams to play. Walk off might be a great opportunity. Great spot for those that game. All right, here we go. Huge play for Minster. Here comes the blitz. Steffi's going to throw it over the middle of the field. Looking and for Niemeyer. That ball's going to fall incomplete. Thanks to a huge hit. Christian McGee, one of those seniors again, Mark, just coming up with a big time play. That was a really good throw and an effort to go down low and catch the football, but that was just separated from the ball with the big hit. I'll tell you what, Brogan Steffi put that ball right on the money. He threw that between about yeah. four defenders and right on the numbers and just a bigger hit. I just jarred it loose. I don't see a flag, but I see our officials having a conference. It's dangerous to think that uh, Brogan Steffi is a sophomore. 239 to go with this one at midfield. Minster has a single timeout remaining. First down. Pretty close. End this one for the Redskins. This is Eilerman. He will lean forward. Well, that was Howard, excuse me. No, you were correct. That was. Look, well, that I was thought it was. I heard the PA guy yeah, say Holler. Yeah, yeah. I thought I got it wrong. No, nope, you were 100% correct. That was Darren Eilerman. And Minster's going to use their last time out here. That they do. They get picked up a yard on the opening play of this particular drive. If you're looking for a perfect gift for an out of town sports fans, WSN can now be streamed anywhere in the world online, on Roku and Apple TV. For $100 donation, give the gift of hometown sports for the holidays. Sign up on app.wsn.tv or by downloading our Roku and Apple TV apps. Final Mr. Timeout as they uh, try to stop this Fort Army drive. He's second at about nine. Crowd starting to filter out on a very cold, blustery night with some snow here at Sydney. Please, please reset Mr. Timeout from one timeout. Thank you for coming from the United Timeout. Please have one timeout remaining. Okay. Get the call. I, I think they said that they were not charged for the timeout at the third quarter there where they were discussing the down markers. See. So I think they're going to give them that timeout back. All right, so they do have one timeout ring. In fact, they just put it back up on the, on the scoreboard. Of course, we're on the uh, Redskins side of the field. Some of the people here are not quite understanding what that particular call was. And I like fans. You, know? <laughs> you, you see with your heart, not with your head sometimes, you know? Here's handoff again. This will be Island pushing down to the 45. 81, Charlie sneezing. And 30, 26 there on the tackle, Will Knapke again. This time, the Wildcats will burn their last time out. So. They do take their final time out. To the cheers of the Fort Lauderdale fans. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> and a few boos to go along with it as well. We'll be looking for high school basketball next weekend. The girls' season opens up next Friday night. We'll be at the Bath Invitational. This Bath, Brian. For sales and uh, very local will be there next weekend. We'll have those games for you as well as playoff football next weekend as well. So fire up your WSN app and figure out where we're going next weekend. Our guru Ben Rife will sit down on Sunday afternoon and plan the week out. Been a busy week this week with state soccer, state volleyball, and seven playoff football games to take care of. No. No better outlet does it like WSN. What you guys do for our local athletes is just absolutely amazing. Ben Rife is the absolute guru of that. And if you want to be involved, get a hold of sales, and they'll help put your ad for your business on as well. And this time they're going to get him in the backfield as Eiderman leans forward. Charlie Schmeezing again there. He's played really well tonight. Yes, Along with 74, Fletcher Luthman there for the Wildcats. So Cannot stop the clock anymore. Get a pair of juniors out there for the front for the Wildcats making some big stands. And Fort Lord is going to punt it away again. So Charlie Smeezing, who goes 6 2, 200, and is a junior. Here's that punt opportunity coming again. 
Bishop did what they had to do. Got a couple of timeouts and a stop. And Mauer will punt again. They roll this one down the field. And Minster will take over with 133 to go. It's the following weekend, Thanksgiving weekend, is the boys' tip-off classic. It's always a great event over in Elida. Probably some playoff football that weekend as well. And taking over on their own 22-yard line. Every year, Tim Goodwood posts a picture on his Twitter account of his Thanksgiving Day turkey practice. He's done a lot of it. It's always special when you get into that practice on during the football season. So. Here's Steffi to throw, and this is man that time. Looking for Kaus there, the 15 on the little bubble screen. It's one of the few passes he's thrown that hasn't looked like a good pass. That one just didn't come out of his hand like his others have. We'll go back to the 22-yard line where it will be second down. Second down to 10. Of course, it's one of my, my favorite facilities to come to to do playoff football. They always treat us well here at Sydney. It's a great facility. Seats about 7,000. Hospitality's been great as well. And chasing him down. Steffi throws and dry. Did he kick out? No, he did not catch it. Just couldn't get, hold on again. Yeah, try to get Kaus again on the sideline over yeah, there. Trying to get his feet in bounds. Just couldn't snag it. So 121 to go. We have 12 seconds off the clock. We run two incompleted passes. Back to the line of scrimmage will go. Fort Norm is still bringing that pressure as Darren Eilerman was coming hard from the backside trying to chase down Stephen there. Time the receivers will go three to the left. Here's Stephen to throw. Pressure off the corner. Throws it out. And here's Webker and it was knocked away. Ethan Kaiser came in just in front of Webker at the last second there to get a hand on it. Kaiser was flying to the football that time. He had laid back in coverage and then came up forward quickly. And we were at fourth down from the 22. Minster down to their final opportunity. Got to get 10, and this one comes to an end. You can hear the. Redskins fans on our side, they know where this game is at right now. Got the cowbells up, and uh, yeah, they're loud and proud yeah, tonight. Yes, yeah, they are. The receivers go three by two. And they rush four. Here's Steffi to throw. Throws and intercepted. Yep. Yeah. And Dylan Sanders. Sanders. And Fort Army will take over with 67 seconds to go. They picked that one off on the desperation pass by Steffi. Redskins are going to win this one. Another senior making a big play for the black and red. Red and black as Dylan Sanders intercepts the pass. And a couple kneel downs here for Fort Lorman. They're going to get it done. I count 11 seniors at a very quick count for Fort Lorman. Most of them have played very well this evening. That's Max Mauer trotting in to be the 11th guy in this particular formation. Snap will go to Mauer, and he will take a knee. Sunday afternoon at 3 o'clock is the official announcement for where the OHSAA will send all their playoff teams. Somehow social media always knows by about 10 in the morning. Not sure how that works, but it does. And then that loss will take them back to the 49-yard line, and we're going to have to do this about one more time. Yeah, that's it. Fort Lorman is going to snap this one one last time. Run that play clock down. That they do. 
And the Fort Laramie Redskins will move on with a 35-19 victory over the Minster Wildcats. And Quit Britain, let's first of all, let's throw some props out to Seth Whiting's team tonight. They're going to finish 8-5 this season with a very young football team, and they competed well for a long, long time, and there's just too many seniors, I think, too much experience, but this is a, a good effort by them, and they got a good program coming up over the next few years. Yeah, great job by Menster this year. A heck of a season. This team was 1-9 last year. Yep. 8-5 and five this year, all the way to the state's uh, regional uh, semifinals, winning two playoff games. A lot to be proud of for the Minster Wildcats and a lot to be excited for next year. Fort Armory will go to 11 and 2. They will play New Bremen next weekend. You were just handed a stat page. I know you haven't had a chance to look at it. Is there anything quick jumps off the page numbers wise? Uh, biggest thing for me, uh, 156 yards rushing for Fort Laramie. Uh -huh. Caleb Maurer with 118 yards rushing and he came into the game tonight with a touch over 380 yards rushing, so almost half of his total tonight for the season. So big, big time performance by the senior quarterback on the ground. And probably on a night where it was a little bit difficult to throw the football, he turned to his legs instead. We want to thank our uh, sponsors this evening. That has been Structure Outdoor Ohio, who sponsored our scoreboard. Bristol Electric sponsored our first down. Craig Britton, thank you for all your efforts this evening. We're going to thank our tech crew tonight. That would be Matt Brown and Jennifer Beck. We appreciate all the work they did. Nick Friendly will have this back to the station. He's been doing some of the live streaming as well. The Fort Lauderdale Redskins will move on. They're 11-2 playing New Bremen next week. We've been watching high school playoff football at WOSN.